Hey there, I have been playing with a lot of builds in RoboQuest lately, and one of the ones that really stood out to me is the Explosive Commando. Now, I usually do this with the Elephant Gun, but a lot of you have been saying that the Beluga Cannon is really good, so we decided to try it out this run. I ended up rolling the starter chest enough times for me to just think it did not spawn. Turns out it does, and I was just incredibly unlucky. But don't worry, we do find our Beluga Cannon very early on in the canyons, so it was still early enough for me to consider it the majority of the run, and I'm sure you guys will like it. I hope you enjoy. Now, I wasn't entirely familiar with the Beluga Cannon, because I just didn't take it very often. But I assumed it would have a long reload or cooldown time, and I wanted to prepare myself uh... for it. Hot Potato is incredibly attractive as a perk for a long reload weapon. I imagine we'll want Hot Potato for it, once we do get it. Hey, Beluga Cannon! Just like that. That easy. We found a Beluga Cannon very early on, and luckily it was Blue Rarity with two blue affixes. This was a big find. It's an energy weapon. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, let's try it out. Now the fact that it had two blue affixes on it is what makes it really, really good. Usually the blue affixes are the ones that make a weapon feel really different and behave differently as well. I was excited to see what kind of combos we could reroll onto it. Uh, I think we take fire rate, and we'll do more damage against turret, sure. The potato. I've never used this either. Unfortunately, Chef Bob didn't grace us with his presence in the canyons, but hopefully he would show up in the next checkpoint and we could start re-rolling. The weapon was feeling good, and the inherent element being cryo was great since it's my favorite of the three. The blast radius was large, and the projectiles fired in a straight line with no drop off. Solid weapon all around, especially for explosive commando. I was very excited to see what this thing could become by late game. Why is it called the Beluga Cannon? So, I'm take flower pot. I had to weigh my option between flower pot and toaster. Toaster would be great if we were to get kazoo or crab key ring in the future, but flower pot would have much more sustainability and is always a really strong pick. In the midst of my decision making, I had completely forgot to re-roll our beluga cannon. Oh well, it certainly wasn't underperforming as it was. No, it's just whenever you uh, overheat, you just reload immediately. Cause I'm, I'm using hot potato right now.
We were flying through the ruins, a location that I consider to be the most challenging, but also the most rewarding of the three paths leading to stage two. This thing was putting in work, and we were discovering the movement capabilities of it too. If we were flying near a wall and needed to close a gap or get to the other side of a room, we could shoot the wall with the cannon and use the blast to propel us forward at great speeds. Oh, we'll snag baby boom, for sure. Black powder. Oh yeah, you can get it with hit scan. I'm aware. Yeah, all explosives can get hit scan. I think all projectiles can get hit scan. Yeah, I do wonder how this would work with that. I actually don't think it's too bad without hit scan though. I, I think it has. I think it has a pretty fast travel time. Uh, unlike the uh, what's it called? Volcano rifle. Volcano rifle. I can't stand that thing without hit scan. I have since learned to love the Volcano Rifle, but that's for another day. Let's see what else we can get on it, though. <laughs> um, I kind of want to get Fragments. I kind of want to get Fragments and Mega Boom. That's something I can do. Fragment hit scan? That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Not gonna lie. That is pretty nice. Maybe I will run it. Maybe I will do this. With a customized Beluga Cannon in my hands, I was excited. We got the good roll, now we just needed the items and perks to complement it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Get it? Get what, get what I'm saying there? Get what I'm saying there? The power of the Beluga Cannon uh, was really getting to my head now, genius. and I started to irreparably mar the comedic universe in which I could only ever dream of grasping. I was really enjoying this weapon. This thing was obviously a monster with ad clear, but I wasn't expecting much from it in a boss fight. But any confusion about his performance in the single target damage department would soon be cleared up as we approached our first boss. Exciting. There he, there he goes, <clears throat> being all frozen and stuff. The cryo buildup on this thing was crazy. We froze him extremely fast and got him to half HP to boot. This thing was shredding.
elemental damage. I think we'll take that. Freeze rate probably seems like the right call. And we always gamble. Boom! And that's why we do it. That's why we do it. We love to see it. We just snagged some incredible items. Ice Cream Cone for the increased buildup and duration of freeze, Miss B for the increased auto crit rate, we won the Wonka Bar Gamble, and we snagged the Crab Key Ring. If only we grabbed the toaster before. This run had been blessed by the item gods, and we were gonna make the most of it. Oh my god, that was close. Watching the Kaboom video, Insanity Man. Thanks, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but I am taking it as one. <laughs> that, was a, that was a tough one. That was a tough run for me, the Kaboom video. <laughs> For sure. Killer video. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Big Shmeeb. Phenomenal name, by the way. I love that name. We found Bag. This increases mag size, but slows down reload speed. We had Hot Potato to negate the reload altogether, so this was a good pick, um, but I wasn't sure if it worked with energy weapons. You know what? It's a good way to test it. So one shot takes up 11. I want shot. Okay, so it does work with energy weapons. It's nice. Hey, thank you for the follow, not your friend Graham. Potato throw damage and radius. We could do that, or just get even more elemental damage. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna do the latter. Oh hell yeah, we take credit card. Beautiful. We'll do Doom Gardens this run. Hey, thank you for the follow, Nate Hawk. Appreciate you. For those wondering why I said I thought Ruins was the best path to pick for Stage 2, this is why. Ruins gives you a free perk point and pops you out at fields. In fields, there are dig spots you can dig loot from with a shovel, unlike Aqua Station, but you can also go through Doom Gardens, which also awards you a free perk point. After Doom Gardens, you'll pop out halfway through Aqua Station. This entire process all takes place in Stage 3, so you can benefit from both the free perk point and the XP what, what, of killing mobs in stage three. Uh, what's going on? What's going on here? Good, I'm gonna say all of them. Give me one second. Oh God. No, I really do appreciate the followers there, guys. Thank you so much. While we're on the subject, thank you guys for the support you've shown me in the RoboQuest community. You guys have just been showering me with love and are making content creation for this game an absolute blast. I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna screw up the Doom Gardens if I don't pick up the pace. Nah, we're good. We're good. We made it through. Easy S rank on this Doom Gardens. Very nice. Fire rate? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes, we always do fire rate. We always do fire rate, right guys? 
Been watching your vids on YouTube and figure out by stop by and uh, drop a follow. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm flustered from all the love you guys are showing me. Auto crit chance by 20. Beautiful. We love to see it. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, burner explosion. We'll take that. And we have bow tie. Absolutely, we take that. Right, let's get goofy with it. Another beautiful loot room. We can't hit natural crits anyways with the Beluga Cannon, so Poppy giving us an increased 20% auto crit chance is massive. Candle giving us a 10% burn and explosion damage is also nice, but the cherry on top was the Bowtie, giving us an extra 30% increased damage to enemies with less than 25% of their HP remaining, which is a big help with bosses. All the stars were aligning for us this run. It was magnificent. Scanning burst. Ooh, or self-control. It is a tough for me. I mean, top quality, yeah, they're so good. But scanning burst is just straight up a 50% increase to damage across the board. So I think we just take that. We were really starting to get a taste of the traversal capabilities of the Beluga Cannon as well. All explosive weapons contribute to this in a way, with the Mine Gun being the go-to for movement due to the control you have over your rocket jumps. But we weren't well, using the Beluga good. Cannon for the movement. It was just a nice touch along with the monstrous killing capabilities this thing already had. We do not like being stunned here, believe it or not. That was a pretty quick Aqua, aqua Station. Same, been watching for the past few days after RoboQuest full game came out. Yeah, I, I chose a good time to cover it, I guess. I mean, it's a phenomenal game, though. It's a phenomenal game. It deserves the coverage. I'm shocked at, like, how few people actually know of the game. I really hope when the Game Awards come around, the devs, like, slip them some footage of the game and they get some, like, advertisement at the Game Awards. That would be great. I don't think that's going to happen. That's extremely wishful thinking. Like, unbelievably wishful thinking right there but it would be so nice because this game deserves a big player base man it is really a gem you got the experimental shorty upgrade yet in a run uh yeah I've, I've used both of them i've used i've used all the shorties uh one of these days though i'm gonna have to take headhunter and just like delete all the bosses in like half a second I don't like Headhunter too much, just because I like to use my shorty a lot in ad clear, and uh, it's really hard to ad clear with that, at least for me. But I mean, yeah, it just shreds bosses, so. And the explosive one is just fun if you're going for the build that I'm going for right now. I agree, this game is massively underrated. Oh yes, yes it most certainly is. No, 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 no. Okay, good. The rover got frozen, thank god. I'm scared the rover was gonna get away for a second. I do love their cute little hats. Those are nice. Beautiful touch. Uh, hot potato cooldown by two seconds. Let's grab this in case we end up getting more fire rate and we get to the point where hot potato can't keep up with how fast we're emptying the gun. Right now, Hot Potato's doing a good job of always being ready whenever we're out of ammo, but if we get more fire rate in this, that might not be the case. <laughs> okay, this is goofy. I am liking the Beluga Cannon. Great recommendations. Anyone who recommended this, thank you very much. Like, what is that, dude? Like, what is that? It's just so fast. Ah, damn. We, if only I would have had bowl before I took marking shorty. That would have been great. I will take, because... 
Oh, I didn't realize I only had six cells. That was actually not smart for me to do. I'm gonna take bowl though. Okay. No matter, we're still strong. I just wanted to be even stronger. Yeah, that blast radius is also just absurd. Oh my god. One of the reasons our blast radius is so goofy is because we took Baby Boom earlier in the run, which has a 40% chance to add a secondary explosion that has 35% increased blast radius, but 35% decreased damage. This applies to all explosions, by the way, even the fragments. That was close. We took a lot of damage in that room. I don't really know what we got hit from, but we did take a lot of damage. Well, that was close. And we will, of course, increase our damage and blast radius with explosives. Because, you know, we need more blast radius with our beluga cannon. Oh my god. Beluga cannon runs now? We are trying out the beluga cannon. It's about time I try it out. And it is, it's cooking. It's doing a good job. For a non-elemental build, this was really, really good single target damage for an explosive. We didn't even have the cryo-yo in this run, which would have increased our cryo crit damage by another 25%, or banana, which increases our explosive damage by 25%, but decreases damage against multiple enemies by the same amount. These are both very good for boss damage. But yeah. Yeah, it's doing a good job. I can tell you that much. It's definitely doing a good job here. Strawberries. Yeah, strawberries isn't really good for explosive builds, unfortunately. I'll take the power cell though, and I'll grab salt shaker, and we'll upgrade Now, this. if we were running a cryo build yeah, with engineer or elementalist, we could guarantee a 100% crit chance with this weapon against frozen targets, making strawberries a very strong pick. Just a thought for future runs. tough mini missile no 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 let's reroll top quality sounds pretty good i think i'm gonna take top quality Melee and shorty. Nah, eh, why not? We'll take it. We'll take melee and shorty damage. Another beluga cannon. Excuse me. See, it has potential. We'll take it. Ours is better, but this one, I can reroll. This was a risky play, 
We were trading out ore reliable for a beautiful piece of clay. Molding it into a work of art could be very expensive, more expensive yeah. than we could afford, but the benefits outweighed the risks in my mind, and we took it. Hopefully luck would be on our side. Uh, we're gonna need the power cells. Or you know what? We can actually do this. Rewheel and hit scan. That's kind of nice. Freewheel and overclocking. That's also pretty good. That's also very good. Do I want to keep going though? What do we think? What do we think? Uh, let's... Sure. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Ideally, we wanted to get one with Freewheel and Fragment. Possibly with a Cryo build-up mod as a green affix. But we were running low on power cells, and I didn't want to go broke with a Bricks Beluga. The roll we had was good, but I still would have preferred my old one. I could go back and get it, but I still had hope for what this could become in the future. seems good yeah it seems pretty strong yeah it does um the only thing i kind of want on it is fragment though i think i would trade out a uh, overclocking for fragment but i mean even the green perk is also really good applies cryo 10 percent faster like that's that's pretty solid so i don't i don't know if i want to like keep keep re-rolling and potentially lose what i currently have The more I used it, the more I saw the overclocking affix to be a solid pick, as it complemented top quality. Now we were dealing considerably more damage with the top half and the bottom half of the mag. I wondered if fragments would still be better than overclocking, but I ended up being content with the roll I had after giving it a bit more thought. What we got here? Um, more power cells. Increased cryo crit damage. Yes, we will take that. Yo yo is big find. Very big find. Let's see what we can do with this. We're making incredible time, by the way. Um, spare head, obviously a banger, but yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. I shouldn't skip out on that. I definitely shouldn't skip out on that. Spare head revives us if we die. I don't normally like to take it because ideally I'm not going to die in the first place. But, I've lost many beautifully built runs because of a brief lapse in judgment, and didn't want us to come to the same fate as those cursed runs. There we go. First fifty percent. That's a big deal. Heavy weapon fire rate by twenty percent and their damage by twenty percent. This is a heavy weapon, right? Let's take it. I've never actually used this in a build before, so I'm, I'm very excited to see how this is gonna go. 
It was my first time taking stone block, and while I was excited to reap its benefits, I was a bit scared of the increased movement speed penalty against Iris's second phase laser barrage. Sparehead ended up being a very reassuring pick after all. Yeah, this is kind of goofy. This is certainly goofy. Explosion damage by 20%, but decreased radius by uh, 30. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll take that. We'll take that. It's definitely doing damage. It most certainly is doing damage. This thing was already performing very well against bosses. Certainly not the fastest kills I've ever gotten, but not bad. Hopefully the perfume bottle could at least let it compete for my fastest boss melts. Doubtful, but I was still interested in seeing its performance. Get in there. This thing was indeed melting. Faster than I expected, at least. Perfume Bottle was definitely pulling its weight, and what a perfect time for it to drop too. It might have been a hindrance in the early game, but when it's this late in a run, you gotta start focusing on boss damage. Explosion auto crit chance? Yes, please. We have a lot of auto crit in this build, I believe. So we have... Yeah, we just have a lot of auto crit. I wish I could have, like, a stat sheet that I could pull up so I could see the exact amount. But we have 15 from Baby Boom. We have another 20 from top quality. Hopefully those are additive, so it's 35%. Um, and then we have... Where is it? And then we have the poppy, which is another 20%, which, again, hopefully additive. 55% chance to crit every shot. Um, and then is that it? And then another 5 from Miss B, so 60% chance to crit every shot. That's kind of crazy. Now, I'm not the most knowledgeable on all the stats and how they work in this game, so if these buffs end up being multiplicative, everything I just said is useless. But I have a pretty strong feeling they're additive because of our results. Hello, came from your Kaboom Grenade run, bless your soul. <laughs> Thanks, Steampunk Alchemist, I hope you enjoyed it. That makes it worth it. And move speed. We're gonna take move speed here because we have heavy cube. So that room just got deleted from existence. That was incredibly fast and took little effort to clear. Yeah, they just don't stand a chance. This build is insane, and this weapon has earned its way into the S tier of weapons in my book, regardless of how well it performs oh against Iris. But I feel like she's gonna get melted all the same. Oh, 
Oh my god. That's a, that's a tough room, but we got through it. Uh, I guess is are unfortunate. I guess we'll take full prize. Thank you so much for the follows, Meep and Steampunk. Appreciate it. One sec, let's see this. Alright, here we go. The only thing I'm worried about is if they do their laser attack in phase two, I've never like used a heavy weapon. Like I, I am below regular movement speed right now, so. No, no, I'm not. I lied. We have a bonus because of our fury points. Here's the real problem though. Am I gonna be able to even see what we're doing here? Yo, was that my fastest run? Hold on, 24, 23. That might be my fastest run. That might be like hands down my fastest run. That might be going to YouTube right there. Clip that for reference. That's my fastest run. Let's fucking go. Beluga Cannon coming in clutch. We love to see it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. Thank you so much for watching the video. This is one of the most fun builds I've used yet, and I'm excited to try out more. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing, as it really does help out the channel, and I appreciate it greatly. If you ever want to hang out live, you can check out my Twitch in the description below. I try to go live most weekdays between 8 and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but there's always exceptions. You guys all have a great day. I'm Hatterax, signing off. Peace. Alright. What now? What now, fellas? You guys got anything you want to see that isn't going to make me, like, bash my head against my desk out of frustration? No Kaboom only runs right now. We're not doing any challenges today. <laughs> but if you guys want to, like, see a certain class be played, we can go. We can go play them. A certain weapon you like.